Remember not safe for work risk of running two mods? I do. It did alright, and since it's about a year since I made the last one, I decided, you know what, let's hop back in and see what new mods have been created to rouse our expectations. Now in the time between this video and the last one, you know, a whole year, a lot has changed. Most notably, the game was actually released fully. So uh, a bunch of mods that used to work with the old version of the game no longer work with this one. Most notably being the Femme mod, which does not actually provide models with the enemies anymore, aka half the reason to use the damn thing. But enough stalling. On this Halloween slash No Not November anniversary date, I don't know when I'm actually going to upload this, let's take a look at things that are horrifying and or arousing. I'm going to be going over these skins based on whoever did the mod rather than the character, because as you can see, there are a lot of skins for certain characters, so I'd rather just split it up by who made them. So we're going to start with 12 Gauge Away From Face, who has made a lot of skin mods, although a good deal of them were actually covered in the last video, so I won't talk about them here. I will note, however, of course, first off, that the Commando mod that he made has received uh, quite a different body shape. So, uh, yeah, it's enough for me to mention it. You have to enable it in the config files, though, so that's it. So the Mandalorian was a TV series thing that went on and was very popular. In fact, people still post about Baby Yoda. And yeah, here we go, representation of that in Risk of Rain in the form of Mandalorian Commando. Next up is his bandit skin. And you may be thinking, this doesn't seem not safe for work to me, and I completely agree. I don't know why this is tagged as not safe for work, it is simply, like, female bandit. So, uh, yeah, not much to say here. Now compared to the old Femme mod model, the engineer is definitely a lot more, uh, bulky than the previous iteration. You may not be able to see it very clearly due to the sitting posture and the arm in front, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty clear from the second skin, kind of, at least, that well, these are not possible human proportions by any means. Although, I guess it does fit in with the lore of Engineer being only half-human, kind of. Merc's transformation is oddly tame, considering the nature of the other ones. Well, at least compared to everyone but Bandit. I mean, even the palette swap is just that, a palette swap. Nothing crazy like that or anything. The community loves to make skins for Artificer, and this is no exception. You see here, she's got her own new shiny version of herself. Perhaps this is a throwback to when he had his old skins be very lightly coloured for some reason? Jemo, or Gmo, or however you pronounce this name, I don't know, has decided that the best outfit is, well, no outfit. With this mod that just removes clothes. Two mods, one for Huntress, one for Artificer. We'll go over the Huntress one first, as you can see here there's a bunch of different skin tones, and yes, for some reason there's one that just makes her bottom half a snake. It's a joke, because it's naked, but with an S at the start, so it's snaked. Ha ha ha! There's also an imp skin, which is unironically good. I believe this would be better off as a standalone mod, honestly. The Artificer one obviously does the same thing. Sure, I don't need to censor this part because, you know, it blends in. There's absolutely nothing here. But I'm going to need to censor this, so, uh, yeah, use your imagination here. KJ brings us two mods, starting with AMONG US! Funniest reference I've ever seen. And then we have Thick T, which is multi, but, um, thick, I guess. Uh, there is Booba here. You just cannot see it because of the weird shape of the gun. Up next are Valren's mods, which start off with something completely different from the others. A skin that is male. Yes, this Commando skin here, which is known as Thick Commando, gives him a bit more, well, thickness. You cannot see from this camera angle in the poor lighting, but yes, there is an increased bulge. And it also comes with an alternate palette skin, which is... Probably a reference to something, I'm not exactly sure. Then we have Elysium Loader, which is... I, I don't know, is this some sort of religious symbol? I'm not that cultured that I know every single reference people make. But yes, it comes with two versions, one with and one without the little collar and the crotch covering thing. And third on the list we have Golem Loader, which is actually a very interesting looking skin. And it has an Aurelianite palette as well, which has increased, um, well, assets, as we should say. Also, for some reason, Aurelianite has eyelashes or something like that. But yeah, this skin looks actually pretty good, if you can ignore the, well, y you know. Next up is We Fix Your Mods, or well, I guess this was a broken mod or something, with another thick Artificer patch mod. Just two extra thick Artificer mods, and you may be thinking, this isn't thick, it's fat. And, but don't worry, we'll get to that when we get to that. Also, one of them is named Cannon. Is this Cannon? No, I'm pretty sure it isn't. Hey, do you know Deltarune Chapter 2 came out? Well, yes, pretty much everyone does. And mod creator The Breadman would like you to know this. No, not my bread, this is a completely different person. Because it only took him five days to port Task Manager from that game into this one. 
Now I know what you're thinking. This isn't Not Safe for Work at all. What are you talking about? Well, that's because later on a Not Safe for Work version got made. Man, am I glad that the Risk of Rain 2 modding community is the only place that this character has been looted at. Oh wait, and now we reach the most extensive Not Safe for Work mod ever since, well, last time I did this video. Creepert's Fatify mod, and yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. Now in an attempt not to kink shame, I'm going to keep this to an absolute minimum. Commando comes with two skins, the second of which seems like he's being kept in place by iron plating. Huntress I'm pretty sure was done first and therefore is the most tame of the bunch. Bandit decided to raid every all-you-can-eat buffet in the galaxy before going to the planet. NG pretty much looks like the exact same thing as the old Fem mod, except the second palette is, well, those aren't big green orbs, just saying. Artificer I literally can't even. Mercenary is pretty much just carrying around two huge water jugs. Loader has one of those hats you put drinks in and that feeds into your mouth, except coming from questionable sources. Acrid wants you to get down with the thickness. And the less that is said about Captain's third skin, the better. The last two survivors don't have skins at the time of me recording this, but most likely by the time this is done, they'll probably have the other two up. Who knows. And finally, we have three mods from RuneFox237. One of which being a gameplay mod, so I get to talk about something other than skins for a change. Hooray! Starting off, we have some skin mods for the Commando, that being the Lemurian Commando mod, which is actually fairly decent and is actually not note safe for work as long as you don't edit with the config files. One of which being a nice little nod to Lara Croft, or Lemma Croft, as it's said in the game. M minus two. Next up, we have something that damages my soul, and that being the sexy femme Spyro Huntress mod, which... Wh why does this exist? And the gameplay mod they've brought to us is the Suspicious Tentacle mod. Now what this does is it adds a very interesting lunar item to the game. Hmm. These not Sith work mods have a thing for being lunar items, don't they? Anyway, you go to the bazaar, or find it in a pod, I guess. And what it does is it gives you an item that, over the course of 60 seconds, a little counter ticks down. Now, over the course of this time, you'll notice that your speed actually decreases incrementally until it's reduced to, uh, actually a fairly low value. And what's the trade-off for this? Well, once that counter reaches zero, it resets back to 60, and you get an egg for each stack of the item you have. Now, what do these eggs do? Absolutely nothing, but they are effectively scrap. So basically, you can slow yourself down over time for carrying a bunch of these if you want some free scrap, which, hey, honestly isn't that bad of a deal. If not for a few things. First off, take note of the fact that I am effectively getting free scrap for standing around in the Lunar Bazaar where the difficulty doesn't increase. This is probably an oversight. Meaning that if you have infinite patience, as in you don't even need sacrifice and in going into the void fields to do this sort of thing, you can just straight up get infinite items of whatever is in these cauldrons. Another important thing is that since engineer turrets take whatever items you have, yes, they take this item as well, so they don't even move, so the speed increment doesn't actually matter, unless you use move while turrets like some complete weirdo. So yeah, probably a pretty big oversight, but if you do not try to abuse this, this is actually a fairly fun mod to use. Although it is fairly powerful as well. Then again, it does have that Niner speed downside, so hey, go ahead, try it out if you want. The mod developers said they were going to try to make a safer work version eventually, so if you can't wait, just settle for this one. Now instead of giving you a mod list, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can find all of these mods. Click on Filter Categories. Click Allow Not Safe for Work. Click on the Categories thing. Click on this drop box and click not safe for work. Have it be selected on must contain at least one of these and hit OK. You will see every not safe for work mod that there is. Therefore you will get an impromptu list of pretty much everything I've used in these videos. Also if your mods don't look exactly the same as I do, make sure to check the config editor because that contains a lot of settings in order for you to change exactly how the mods look and you can change things based on your likenesses for certain mods that are compatible with that. Which most are. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, well, there's probably something wrong with you, and I suggest seeking professional help. Uh, you can join my Discord, if you want. It's in the channel description, not the video description, because no one checks that. But, uh, yeah. See you in another year or so, when... I don't know, Not Safe For Work Heretic gets made. I'm honestly surprised that hasn't existed yet.